Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll talk about the new Lost Isle dungeon coming in the next episode of Ragnarok Mobile Eternal Love. In the first episode, we've discussed the overview of this new instance including the rewards you can obtain and the mechanics for clearing first floor. And in this second episode, we'll discuss the mechanics for clearing the second and third floors. Hopefully with this guide, players will find it easy to conquer this new challenge. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. For the second floor, the objective is to defeat the Sea Spirit Totem MVP, which is a formless race, ghost element, and large size. So you can use these cards and headwear for improving DPS or reducing damage received. Using ghost element skills will prove beneficial due to elemental advantage. As mentioned in the previous video, the MVP in 2nd floor has 100% holy damage reduction. Thus, rune masters should use elemental converters such as flame heart. The mechanics for this floor relies more on teamwork and paying close attention to the MVP's mark and action. This because you need to memorize the mark circling around its head and the corresponding random sacrificial action performed. The MVP uses Totem Ray, which activates the Mark of Eye. After a short chant, all players facing the Sea Spirit Totem will be transformed into small totems and receive a Death Curse, which will instantly kill the transformed players after 15 seconds. In order to avoid the Death Curse, all players should turn back from the MVP before the chanting ends. In case you made a mistake and transformed into a small totem, you have no choice but to accept death at the end of the transformation. As a demonstration, you can see in this clip that after the chant ends, the Sea Spirit Totem used the third sacrificial action, which is an upward rotation. And since my character isn't facing the MVP, she didn't transform into a totem. The second skill he uses is Brand Judgment, which activates the Mark of Water. It marks one player randomly and after a short chant, releases AoE damage to the player's location. The more players within the area, the lower the damage received. So all players should move beside the marked player to share the damage received. As a demonstration, you can see in this clip that after the chant ends, the Sea Spirit Totem used the first sacrificial action, which is a clockwise rotation and my character received huge damage. Good thing she has an anti-fatal buff to prevent dying. The third skill is called All Days Mark, which activates the Mark of Wood. It deals AoE damage to each player's location after a short chanting time, so you need to move away from each other to reduce the damage you receive. As a demonstration, you can see in this clip that after the chant ends, the Sea Spirit Totem used a third sacrificial action, which is an upward rotation and my character received damage. After releasing these three skills sequentially, Sea Spirit Totem may cast the Component Analysis Totem Ray skill, which will apply a random mark and death curse to all players in the field. Unlike the first Totem Ray skill, the Component Analysis skill shouldn't be avoided. You need to face the MVP to transform into a small totem and then perform the corresponding sacrificial action to lift the death curse. Failure to transform or do the correct action will resolve to death after 15 seconds. As a demonstration, my character in this clip received the Mark of Eye. So to cancel the death curse, I need to repeat the sacrificial action performed when the MVP used Totem Ray, which was the third one or an upward rotation. And since I got it correctly, my character didn't die after the transformation ended. As a tip, if you can't remember the sacrificial action corresponding to your own mark, you can simply refer to the status bar below your avatar to find out which sacrificial action can cancel the death curse. Other skills used by Sea Spirit Totem are as follows. We have Totem Summoning Totem Ray, which will summon several small totems after chanting. The small totems summoned will become stronger and stronger over time so you need to destroy them as fast as possible. Another one is Destruction Wave, which the MVP only uses whenever there is no target that it can auto-attack within 10 meters. It will continuously release high damage attacks to all players. 
this means that one member, preferably with large HP pool, should always be near the MVP to prevent this skill from being casted. Every once in a while, the MVP also casts Press Shock, which is a fan-shaped shock wave that deals damage in the direction of the target. There is also the Diffusion Ripple, which unleashes magic to a circular area around the MVP, and then terrain-shaped area 5 meters from the MVP. After a short chant, it deals damage and immobilizes players for a few seconds. And lastly, we have the Spell Magic, which summons several attackable purification totems at random locations. These totems can dispel the buffs of players around itself from time to time, so you need to either destroy them or move away from their AoE. Once the MVP is defeated, rewards will be given. Make sure to have enough fortune coins to get the extra rewards. Clearing this stage will randomly give out military chests specifically for ancient footgear. To proceed to the third and final floor, just go to the pirate ship at the northernmost part of the island. In this floor, you need to defeat the Demon Admiral MVP, which is of demon race, neutral element, and large size. So you can use these cards and headwear for improving DPS or reducing damage received. The mechanics for a third floor is divided into three phases, and everyone must know the mechanics in order to successfully clear the dungeon. Phase 1 is fairly quick and simple. Your team just needs to reduce the MVP's HP to 70% using brute force while avoiding his skills. During this phase, Demon Admiral casts Gunslinger skills such as Crossfire which deals damage to a fan-shaped area in the direction of his target, and Absolute Penetration, which deals damage to a linear area towards his target. The damage of these skills increases when more people are in range. Additionally, the MVP casts several skills that generate Corrupted Water Circles, which will cause damage to players stepping on it. First is Swordfish Summons, which summons a Corrupted Fen that will follow a marked player for 13 seconds. It causes damage every second to nearby players, so everyone should avoid it. If the fan damages the marked player, it will generate a corrupted water circle on the spot, and after 13 seconds, the swordfish will disappear. Another one is Torrent, which marks two players where in water will spout at their location. It causes damage, inflicts stun, and then generates a corrupted water circle. Third and last is Corruption Call, which summons several green corrupted orbs at random locations. These green orbs will detonate after 10 seconds, causing huge full screen damage and generating corrupted water circles. Your team should attack and destroy the green orbs before they explode to prevent receiving damage. In Legend Difficulty, the MVP casts Shrapnel which marks two players and after a few seconds causes damage to a circular area around themselves. And if there's a corrupted water circle within the area, it will explode causing additional full screen damage. Once Demon Admiral's HP is at 70%, Phase 2 will begin wherein he becomes invincible and summons his heart and a corrupted legion of monsters. These are the attributes and skills of the summoned mobs. The objective in Phase 2 is to kill the Corrupted Heart at the center of the field. The Heart and Summon MVPs have 100% Holy Damage Reduction, so Rune Masters can either switch to Dark Flame Sword or use an Elemental Converter. Priority for Phase 2 is to remove first the Invincible Shield of the Heart by killing the Summon MVPs, Strove, Devil Squid, and Drake. This will generate red energy orbs at fixed locations that will move towards the heart. Then you need to destroy the red energy orbs to grant the killer the ability to attack the heart for 10 seconds. The timer will refresh every time a red orb is destroyed. If the red orb is not destroyed and reaches the heart, 
all mobs in the screen will recover full HP. While the main DPS focuses on killing the heart, other party members should continue killing the green corrupted orbs before they self-destruct to prevent full screen damage. So the order of priority when killing mobs is summoned MVPs, then energy orb, then corrupted orbs, and then last are the other mobs. You need to kill the mobs quickly since their damage increases the longer they survive. Another thing to take note of is that different types of large tentacles may also appear on the two sides of the ship's deck. For choking tentacles, three blue-green tentacles will spawn around the deck. After a few seconds, the tentacles will deal huge damage to a large area in front and paralyzes all injured players. As a tip, players need to go to a safe spot with no tentacle to prevent being paralyzed. Players who have safely avoided may help the paralyzed players by attacking the choking tentacle bound to their bodies. For impact tentacles, a single purple tentacle will spawn at one part of the deck. After a few seconds, the tentacle will release a high burst skill, dealing damage that is split among all players hit. Thus, at least one player with large HP pool should go near the tentacle to receive the high burst damage. If no player is hit, it will cause huge full screen damage that can insta-kill players. And for the pulling tentacles, a single blue-green tentacle will spawn at one part of the deck. It will pull and attract players which can interfere with the release of skills. Corrupted water circles will also be attracted to the tentacle and it will disappear once it touches the tentacle. Once the heart is destroyed, the MVP will only have 40% HP remaining. After that, we can proceed to the third and final phase wherein Demon Admiral transforms into its final form and have enhanced attacks. While the MVP is attacking, you still need to watch out for the tentacle mechanics. Since normal attacks will now trigger small area fan shaped damage. You can use Slash, which destroys the player's equipment and applies a dispellable debuff, which steals the player's healing received. Once the MVP is defeated, rewards will be given. Make sure to have enough fortune coins to get the extra rewards. Clearing this stage will randomly give out military chests specifically for ancient accessories and 4 C's gold medal which you can use to claim any military chest. Since there are 2 accessory slots, clearing this floor weekly should be of high priority. Alright, that's it for the mechanics of the second and third floors of Lost Isle Dungeon which is coming in the next episode of Ragnarok Mobile Eternal Love. Understanding the core mechanics for this instance will surely help your team succeed in clearing this instance every week. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.